Hi guys, it's Jade from the Saddle Bank and today we're going to be looking at the top 10 GP saddles for high wither horses. So we're going to be looking at what is a high wither horse, why do they need special saddles, the things that you should be looking for and of course where you can get your high wither saddle from. So before we dive into the top 10, let's get started on what is a high wither horse. So what is a high wither horse? So a high wither horse is essentially what it says on the tin. It's a horse with high withers. So we've got two horses on the screen here. So as you can see, the withers on the horse on the right are higher than the withers of the horse on the left. Um, the left horse has got really well sprung ribs, so he's quite round in his ribs. He's got quite a flat back as well. So the horse on the right has obviously got, got quite a good size with the to him. And some breeds can be notorious to having high withers, such as thoroughbreds, whereas it can be uncommon in some other breeds. So cobby types are usually quite flat and low through the withers. But that doesn't mean that every single thoroughbred has got high withers, nor does it mean that you won't find a cob with high withers. So it depends quite largely on the horse's breeding and their confirmation as a result of that. So you do need to take into consideration your horse's confirmation when looking to purchase a saddle. So why do high wither horses need special saddles? So when I say a special saddle, essentially I'm referring to a saddle with um, which has been designed with a high wither horse in mind. So something that maybe has a cutback pommel, um, it has maybe got drop panels um, to give a bit more surface area and allow the saddle to be lifted up and over the withers. So looking at the horse here, so his withers are there. Um, and some horses with high withers may also have atrophy, which is essentially muscle wastage, and that's either side of their withers usually, so you get a little bit of a dip behind there. But again, not all high wither horses have that. And that could be due to lack of condition, um, the horse not working correctly, and then obviously failing to build up strong muscles, or a poorly fitted saddle, which has restricted the horse from developing muscles in that area. Now, high wither horses can also have various different types of backs. So they can be flat backed, which is common with, with warm blood. So we often see in a warm blood, they have long, high sloping withers that then goes off onto a flat back. Or they may have a sway back, so which obviously dips down. And again, it completely depends on the horse. So it's really important to work with your local saddle fitter to find the most suitable saddle for your individual horse. Now, one final point is that on high wither horses, you may have heard people talking about shark fin withers and be wondering what that actually means. So essentially, it means that the horse's withers are the shape of a shark fin and they drop off really, really sharply um, down to the horse's back. So if you Google high wither, um, if you Google shark fin withers, you're going to see some very high wither horses and obviously they're shark fin withers. And these type of horses are very, very difficult to fit um, because you've got to make sure that you have sufficient clearance on their withers. So here for example you'd imagine the horse's head would be up here his neck would come down his withers and they would drop off to his back and this can be really difficult to fit so if you do have a horse that is that sort of shape then you may need to get a made to measure saddle so just do bear that in mind so things to look for when looking for a saddle for high wither horses. So drop panels, as we've already mentioned, they're sometimes called K panels. And that's what you can see on the top photo here. This is a drop panel. And essentially what it means is that instead of the panel coming down here and along here, as a more traditional panel would, you've got this extra weight bearing area here or surface area here. And it just allows for a bit more flocking to be added to the saddle and helps lift it up over the withers to give that clearance that you need. Now you can also look for a saddle with a cutback pommel, again just to give a bit of clearance over the withers and plenty of room there. And depending on your horse's back shape, you may also need deeper rear gussets and that's going to help you balance out the saddle. So imagine if you're obviously lifting up the front, you're also then going to need to lift the back to keep it in balance and make sure the rider stays central. And with high wither horses, it's not uncommon to have a three or three and a half inch rear gusset on them. And then finally, you should look with a saddle um, for a saddle with front gussets. So as you can see on these pictures here, we've got a full front gusset here, which essentially it's the stitching line we're looking at. So that would be a full front gusset. And then you've also got one here with a half front gusset. So a lot of saddles now come with full front gussets, so you can see them quite often in most brands. Um, and then you've also got the half front gussets, which are really good for horses with those atrophy behind the withers and things like that. And they're quite common um, on saddles which do made to measure, so things like Black Country and brands like that. So just a few things to have a look for there. 
So where can you get a hire with a saddle? So you can work with your local qualified saddle fitter who should be able to source or supply with a suitable saddle for both you and your horse, or you can check out the saddle bank. So we've usually got a good selection of new and new saddles available within the UK trial and worldwide shipping. So it's certainly worth having a look on there. So if you're ready, let's take a look at the top 10 most popular high wither saddles. So first up, we're looking at the Kenton Masters original high wither GP. So this, their original GP saddle is available in either a standard with it or a high with it. And if you're looking for the high with model, you're going to be looking for a saddle which is stamped HGP and they stamp that underneath the left girth straps. And this model has Velcro knee and thigh blocks, which can be positioned to suit the rider. It's adjustable gullet, so it's really, really easy to alter the width yourself yourself. It has flocked panels, and as you can see on the photo here, it's got a full front gusset down there. And it has variable girthing options to stabilize the saddle. And this is a really good one um, for many riders. It's a bit more broad and open in the seat than the S series or the compact model, which we'll look at later. Um, so it's a bit more open in the seat. So if you are a bit of a more petite rider, you might be looking more at the compact model. But this is a really good one priced at 845. And we like it because it's adjustable. It has flock panels and it's a really good price. Now, staying with the same manufacturer here, we're looking at the Thoroughgood High with a GP, and this is a Thoroughgood T4. So this is a lightweight synthetic. It has a slight curve in the tree, and again, it's got that open seat that we just discussed. It has a deeper rear gusset. Again, adjustable gullet system, really easy to alter the width yourself. Velcro knee and thigh blocks, which can be positioned to suit the rider. Now, these saddles, the Kenton Masters and Thoroughgood, um, they're adjustable from narrow medium up to extra wide to extra extra wide. So it's an in-between size. And they come in seat sizes 17, 17 and a half and 18 inch. And this one's a really good starter saddle um, priced at 495. So it's a really good entry level saddle, this one. And we like it because it's adjustable. It's a really good price and it has flocked panels. Now, again, staying with the same family, we're looking at exactly the same saddle here, but in the T8 range. So the T8 range is like a leather look on the outer with a synthetic under. Again, it's got all the same features as the T4 and the Kentamasters we've just looked at. It's just a different material. So they have a really good range to suit everybody's budget. So you've got 495 on the Thurgo T4. You have this one here priced at 625. And then you've got the Kentamasters at 845. So depending on whether you're looking for synthetic, um, part leather, part synthetic or full leather, there's something for everybody here and we like it because it's adjustable really easy to maintain and it has flock panels which allows some minor adjustments to be made now moving away from adjustable gullet saddles we're looking now at the albion k2 gp and this is built on their adjuster tree which means it can be altered up or down two sizes by a qualified albion saddle fitter um, it's not an adjustable gullet tree so you can't do that yourself it does need to go to albion or have an albion fitter do that for you now this one's got fixed knee blocks so that offers really good support um, it has a semi-deep seat and again it's got those drop panels which you mentioned right at the start which is really good for those high with the horses and it comes with a three inch rear gusset option so you can really get that balance and stabilize the saddle now this one is more expensive because it's a traditional english made saddle it's priced at 1860 um, it's really high quality available black or brown it starts at seat sizes start at 16 and a half inch um, and obviously size is what you order it in between narrow and extra extra wide um, you can commonly find these available second hand in medium medium wide and things like that we like it because it's high quality, it's comfortable, and it has flocked panels. Now, next up, moving back to the synthetics, we're looking at the Wentec 2000 High Wither AP. AP stands for all purpose or general purpose, as it's also known. And again, this saddle's got a full front gusset there. It's designed um, with a high wither profile. It has super soft panels, which is their care cushion panels, part of their heart, which is horse and rider technology. Um, adjustable gullet takes the bars from Wintech and Bates, really lightweight, really easy to clean, adjustable in sizes narrow up to extra wide and seat sizes 16 and a half inch up to 18 inch, um, priced at 699. So similar to that of the T8 saddle we've just looked at, the Thoroughgood T8, but we like it because it's adjustable, it's a great price and it's easy to maintain. 
Now, staying with the same manufacturer again, we're looking at the Arena Highweather. Now, Arena is a new brand to the Bates and Wintech family. It has a deeper rear gusset, a semi-deep seat. It's got the Velcro knee blocks, which can be positioned to suit you, adjustable gullet taking the same bars as Wintech and Bates, and it's really lightweight. Again, this is adjustable from narrow up to extra wide. Um, it's made of European leather, which is quite a grippy leather, so gives you a good grip when you're riding. And it's priced at 899 so a little bit over the Kenton Masters price, but still a really affordable price. And we like it because it's adjustable, easy to maintain and lightweight. Now we're moving back to Kenton Masters now and we're looking at the S series high with a compact. Now if you remember earlier I said if you're a bit of a petite rider this would work best for you because it's, the seat is a little bit more compact and it works well for narrower hipped riders. It's also got a flatter shape on the underside of the tree and this is available in a low standard or high with a model so we're looking at the high with the saddle here. That will be stamped HGC underneath the left girth strap. So if you're looking for this model, look for the stamp HGC. Now it's got Velcro knee and thigh blocks. Again, it's adjustable gullet, taking the R bars from Kenton Masters and Thorogood. Really, really easy to alter the width yourself. And that's adjustable from narrow medium up to extra wide, extra, extra wide. It has those flock panels, which allow for minor adjustments to be made by your fitter. And it has variable girthing options, so the saddle can be stabilised. So make sure you take your fitter's advice as to which girth straps you should be using. It's priced at 975, so it's a little bit more expensive than the Kenton Masters original, but it's still really great price under a thousand pound. It's full leather, flocked, available in black and brown, and seat size on this one starts at 16 and a half inch. So if you've got a slightly shorter back horse, this is a good one to look at. But we like it because it's adjustable, it has flock panels, and it's a really good price. Now, again, we're sticking with the same manufacturer, but looking at the different options available. So we've got the Thorogood T4 high with a compact here. And essentially, it's the same saddle we've just looked at, but the synthetic version of that. And this one, again, is priced at 495 So it's a really, really good price. Um, same features as we've just mentioned, deeper rear gussets, adjustable gullet, um, Velcro knee and thigh blocks. Great start to saddle this one. But we like it because it's adjustable, it's flocked and easy to maintain. And again, staying with the same brand family and just looking at a slightly different material, we have the Thorogood High with the Compact GP T8. So that's the part leather, part synthetic, um, priced at 625. So this is a really good in-betweener. If you can't quite stretch to the Kenton Masters price, but you want something that looks a bit more like leather, this is your saddle. And again, perfect for those petite riders. And we like it because it's adjustable, easy to maintain, and it has flock panels. And then we're looking now and moving away from the adjustables again. We're looking at a more traditional English saddle. This is the Jeffreys Falcon Hawk event high wither. Really popular people who go hunting and things like that. And those who like that traditional English uh, wooden tree leather saddle. Um, this particular one is specifically designed for high withers. So you can see on the front there, it has got front gussets or higher front gussets. It comes with a drop panel. It's wool flocked so you can have minor adjustments made. And it has a fixed knee block for support. So again, perfect for anybody who's hacking out, general riding, doing a bit of hunting, all of that. And it's available in seat sizes 17 or 18 inch and priced from 1600 so about right for an English made saddle and we like it because it's high quality it's comfortable and it has flocked panels so which one's right for you and your horse so it's first it's going to depend on your budget so we've shown you a range of saddles here priced from 495 up to 1860 so you're going to have a budget in mind however do also take into consideration you may get a better quality second hand saddle for your budget than the price of a brand new synthetic so there's always, always lots of different options available to you so do, do just have a look at those you then need to consider the size of your horse and the, in particular the length of their back. So as we've seen, some of these models only start at 17 inch, whereas some are available in 16 and a half inch. So if you've got quite a short backed horse, you're going to need to go for one of the options in the 16 and a half inch. Your saddle fit is going to be able to advise you on the on size that you actually need. But if you want to learn a bit more about this, uh, make sure you do have a look at Saddlebank Academy, where we teach you how to recognize signs of a poor fitting saddle online from the comfort of your home. All you need to do is head over to our website at saddlebank.com and check out the academy on there. We can find loads of information on how to recognise signs of a poor fitting saddle, looking at different horse anatomy, how to take templates, all that sort of thing. So do check that out.
You're also going to need to consider the size of the rider, also height and weight. So we're all different shapes, sizes, some with long legs, some with short legs. But whatever your size, do take that consideration because obviously when finding a saddle, you need your knees to be in the correct position, not hanging over the front of the saddle. And of course, you don't want your bum hanging over the back. So the same goes for petite riders. You don't want to be um, drowning in a saddle that's too big for you because you'll find you've got absolutely no support whatsoever. So getting the right size for the rider is also really, really important. Next up, you're going to be looking at the width of the horse. So often people mistakenly think, well, I've got a high with a horse, I need a narrow saddle. That is not always the case. Your horse can actually be a wide fit, but can still have high withers and actually require those drop panels and front gussets. Work with your local saddle fitter so they can identify the best tree shape, model and everything for you and your horse. You then need to think about what you're going to do with the horse. So we obviously we've discussed a range of GP saddles here for everyday use. Um, if you're doing a bit of dressage, you might want something slightly straighter cut. If you like to do a bit of jumping, you might want a bit more of a forward cut GP or maybe one with fixed blocks. Or you may want one with Velcro blocks so you can position the blocks to suit you. Again, it's personal preference, but just do have a think about what you're going to be doing the most. What are you spending the most time doing? Schooling, hacking, jumping, uh, dressage, a combination. It's really important to think that through and get the saddle that's most appropriate for you and your horse. You'll then have a preference towards leather or synthetic. So some people prefer synthetic because it's lightweight, it's easy to clean, it's particularly useful for those who like to go and ride on the beach because the sand and salt water won't damage the saddle like it would a leather saddle. So in that case a Wintec or, or something like that may work out well for you. But other people prefer the comfort and feel of a more traditional leather saddle. So that means you're going to need a larger budget to accommodate purchasing leather. You'll also have a preference towards whether you want leather or synthetic. So some people prefer synthetic because it's lightweight, it's easy to clean, and it's particularly useful for those who like to ride on the beach because the sand and salt water won't damage the saddle as if it would if it was a leather saddle. So in that case, um, a Wintec or something like that may work out really well for you. However, other people prefer the comfort and feel of a more traditional leather saddle. But that means you will need a larger budget to accommodate purchasing leather, so do bear that in mind. You'll also have a preference to whether you want an adjustable gullet or a traditional fixed size saddle. So adjustable gullets are great. They're really easy to alter the width um, should the horse change shape. But more traditional fixed size saddles are often more comfortable for the rider and they can work really well on a horse who's matured and who doesn't um, alter in shape drastically throughout the seasons. So just work with your fitter and identify what's going to be best for you and your horse. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you found the video really useful and found loads and loads of tips in there. Don't forget to hit subscribe so that you can stay up to date. And also don't forget to go and find us on social media, Facebook and Instagram at The Saddle Bank and check out what we've got on there. And if you want a chance to be featured on our Instagram page, all you need to do is hashtag The Saddle Bank Riders and we will feature your photos. So I hope to see you again soon. Bye.